Hey guys, in this video I want to show you a new technique I picked up um, and it's called pre-shading. Um, the idea that you're going to build the shading of the model up um, before you actually apply any of the colour. Um, by which I mean we're going to use monochrome paints um, to stipple a pattern over the tank um, and then apply the washes of the colour after. Now, I've recently done this on a 7-inch Primaris Marine from McFarlane Toys, and it's generally changed the way I think about painting any large-scale model. So tanks, um, maybe Imperial Knights when I eventually pick one up, um, and obviously in the case of action figures, the McFarlane Space Marine. So the technique involves you stippling these monochrome colours um, over the edges of the tank, and then obviously applying the, the final colour wash in the end. Now this will work um, for uh, blues, greens, reds, probably purples, although I've not tried it. Um, and the only thing you're going to need is a black undercoat, a selection of fairly ruined brushes, but you will need some sort of finer point ones towards the end. Um, and then of course the range of monochromes. So I've got abandoned black, dawnstone grey, administratum grey and white scar. Now, as you'll notice, some of these panels have been painted brown, and that's because this tank will be added to my Thousand Suns collection, um, and elements of these doors will be yellow. So the yellow technique for pre-shading doesn't follow exactly the same rules. We need a lighter base coat, and I would prefer if these parts were separate and I can do it completely independently, because rather than using these colours, I would prefer to use um, uh, the, was it Graveyard Earth? Um, or I think it was called Steel Legion Draub now, um, and then your Screaming Skulls or Bleach Bones, and then finally the White Scar. But because these patterns are so uh, intricate, I'm going to have to try and fudge it, apply the grey stipple over top, and then hopefully the yellow wash is all right in the end. Um, so yeah, effectively the first step is mixing equal parts of Abaddon Black and Dawnstone, um, and with a really large stippling brush, kind of go all over the vehicle kind of looks like that. Um, now we will get more refined with our stippling as we move forward but one of the important things to note here is you don't want to leave any smooth black area so if I you know just this back corner if I left this as it was in the final stages which will become clear uh, later on in the video um, it won't work on such a smooth spray painted finish you need some sort of texture for the paint to cling to. Um, so yeah that's really the first stage Mix these two together, stipple all over the black areas, um, and then I will see you in a second for step two. So with that all done, now we're going to move on to step two, and we're going to need to use Dawnstone straight out of the pot. Um, no mixing with black this time round, and Try and get rid of some of this off the brush. You don't want too much paint. It's almost like a bit like you're dry brushing. You don't want a huge amount of paint on. Uh, and this time we're going to be a bit more refined with our uh, stippling and we're going to try and run uh, the brush along the sort of lines of the armour panels. So. so I'm just going to run along the bottom. Um, I'm going to do this line as well, which does mean that you uh, you almost sort of uh, touch base with the other line. But never mind, each subsequent um, stage we're going to get smaller and smaller. So they should have that gradual sort of, uh, well, gradient by the time it's finished. So start to see how that's taking shape. Need a bit more paint. And I'm just going to run up the corner here, run up there. And then, of course, along the top. Apologies, my hand is casting quite a shadow there. Let's continue doing the bottom. So yeah, we're going to run this stippling effect along all of the edges, um, along these panels here, and then maybe across here. And um, probably with the, the doors, what I would do is I would try and make it lighter 
towards the the edges. So let's grab some more paint. So yeah, I'll try and run this around the edge. Now if it was just yellow I was doing um, at this point, I've mixed the um, Steel Legion Draub with um, the Base Coat Brown, which I used uh, Snake Bite Leather, an old Games Workshop paint. Um, but yeah, so you can see roughly what I'm doing there. So it's darker in the middle and it's getting lighter as it edges out. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the second step. I'm going to try and finish the rest of this and then see you in a sec. So with that all done... Um, hopefully it's starting to take shape so you can see how I've gone along the edges um, of all these armor panels might be a bit more evidence on the, the back door there and obviously we now need to move on to the next step um, which is administrator gray and we're going to need a brush still one that's fairly ruined or cheap you don't really mind um, sort of ruining um, but it needs a little bit more of a point this time. Um, so yeah, similar principle. We're just going to grab some of this, stipple away, and same thing. We're going to follow the lines that we've already done, but we want to be a bit more careful with wobbling the camera doing this as well. Um, so we're just going to sort of stipple around. We'll be a bit more precise now. It's quite a forgiving um, technique, so I wouldn't worry too much if you do go slightly wrong. So if we can, we can just about see. Just run that, run up here. Yeah, so I'll start working on the rest of this, sort of stippling away. Now the other thing to bear in mind with this technique, or this stage rather, is we now need to do a little bit of edge highlighting. So if I can hold this closer, obviously we can see this little uh, rounded section here. I just want to do a little bit of edge, highling, uh, edge highlighting, if I can get my words out. Um, more important to do um, with the administratum grey, the sections that are still predominantly dark grey or black, um, because the lighter side would be edge highlighted in white later on. Um, but all of these little areas that you might not pick out properly with the stippling. Just want to do a little bit of edge highlighting. Um, so yeah, there's lots of minute detail around the smoke launcher. Uh, and other sections that, yeah, we'll just have to go out and edge highlight a little bit. Um, but yeah, so stage three, smaller um, stippling brush, uh, and then just go over what you've already done, but um, not cover as, as the same sort of area, just keep that a little bit thinner. So again, for example, with the main door, or the side door rather, um, I just want to keep it to the outside now. So again, you just... You're gradually building up that gradient. There we go. Right, I'll see you in a second for uh, step four. So with that administratum grey phase done, we can actually start seeing um, this technique take shape uh, a bit here, um, with the uh, middle of the panel remaining sort of dark, but as it gets closer to the edge, uh, lightening up. Um, there's one more stage now before we can apply the actual colour and we're going to use um, Skull White for that. Um, again, it's a stippling layer as I can imagine you can assume by now and the brush we're going to be using, another ruined one, but one that's slightly smaller um, than ones we have used before. And Just like the other stages, we're going to run it along uh, just the edge, being even more careful with the stippling this time round 
than before because we don't really want to cover everything that's administratum grey, just like the administratum grey didn't cover everything that was dawnstone grey. We're just going to run that along here, following the, the lines of the panel or the armour if you're painting something other than a tank. Um, again, you don't have to be too precious about it. It's quite a forgiving technique in the end. Um, just like that. Now, similar to the last step, we're going to need to do some edge highlighting too. Um, for that, I'm going to use a much smaller brush. And the sort of areas we want to pick out is anything that the stippling didn't. Um, so perhaps a little bit round this circular piece here. Just like so, if I'm camera's focusing. Uh, and the other thing, if if the stippling doesn't capture it, um, capture it, you're going to just pick out the rivets as well. That's another sort of major thing for especially tanks. But if it's large armour work, um, you've got this indentation here, which I, I might just go in and highlight the bottom. Um, just like that. So yeah, um, carrying on, you know, stippling all of the areas again, um, smaller, smaller surface area this time with the white. Um, once we've done that, we can actually move on to the um, the colour stage. So with that last phase now done, um, this will be effectively the pre-shading completed. And um, we can start applying um, the colours uh, to it. Uh, now, what we're going to need, um, the same technique I said earlier on in the video applies for red, um, uh, blue and green and possibly purple but you'll need two or three shades of the you know the the color that you're you're going to use um, in this case because it's a thousand suns rhino I'm going to do it blue and I've got a regal blue um, for the base which is obviously a, a darker a darker shade and I've got a magic blue which is a little bit lighter um, I think the equivalent of this is Calador sky I think for sizzle but it, it doesn't really matter um, whatever paints you have. Um, and the first step is applying a very, very um, watered down wash of the darker color. Um, so let me give this a quick mix. Now, when I did this on the Primaris Space Marine, the, uh, the McFarlane um, action figure, the ratio was for the, uh, the yellow I did was about one part paint about six parts water. For the red, I felt that the pigment was slightly higher and it was one part paint and seven parts water. Um, but for effect, what I'll do, I'll just add in some of this blue paint here and then just one, two, three, four, five, six. And then mix that. And uh, you've got a very, very watery mix. I would prefer to, um, if you're unsure exactly uh, um, how much sort of water to paint ratio you should aim for, I would err on the side of caution and, and make it a little too watery because you can always add another layer if it is. But the idea is we've obviously already put the shading in place. Um, and now we're going to add that colour over top. So it needs to be very thin, otherwise you'll just obscure all the work you've done so far. And although this feels like a wash, it's important to not apply it like a wash. Uh, by which I mean um, a, a traditional wash like Nung Oil or Agrax Earthshade is you kind of cake it on and brush it away. This you want to uh, apply it as if it was a paint. Um, so keep it thin. And it starts colouring the shading we've done already, in this case, the blue. Now you can tell that it's very, very thin, obviously, and it's not really doing a huge amount with just a single coat. So we're going to need to do this a few times. As you can see there, it's um, starting to take the shape we want. Um, so yeah, just apply it to the areas you need it to. Make sure you're not too heavy because you don't want it pulling. You don't want all of this work you've done so far to go to waste.
with obviously with the middle sections we're going to have to go in and uh, be very careful with uh, not applying the blue over the uh, the brown areas here um, so yeah um, coat the model in this mixture um, and then set it aside to dry you want this completely dry before you move on to the uh, the next step which in likelihood will be another um, coat of this same blue over top um, so yeah give me a second and I'll finish this off there we are so that's now dry and we can see especially when we compare um, the white parts over the uh, yellow areas or brown at the moment you can see that it is slightly more blue than it was beforehand with that said um, I've probably made the first mixture a little bit too thin um, which doesn't really matter because uh, I said if it's if it's going to go one of two ways I'd prefer the mixture to be too thin um, and we can do another coat than it to you know, to be too thick and we kind of have to start over again potentially so and that's not too bad so in this this time um, I was going to do a second layer of this um, darker blue anyway so I'll do one two three four five this time so before it was one part paint six parts now it's one part paint five parts water see what this is still quite thin um, and if anyone's interested these um, this little plastic thing here for the mix this is the packaging from a a, a, a chocolate orange so um, works out quite well because you make up some sort of excuse that you need to buy one um, so there we go we just go over again um, remember it's 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 important to use it like a paint and not a wash so you don't don't smother it on and, and apply it too heavily spread it out so it's um, quite a thin coat um, and tuck it in in between these tiny details here make sure I run it along the actual recess so right there we go so focus in now that you can see that it's it's really starting to um, uh, take the, the color that we, we want and you're getting that highlighting through so um, I'll, I'll carry on and, and cover the rest of this I might do a third layer of regal blue in which case I'll let you know but it could be after this is dry I'm I feel that we'll go straight on to the lighter blue so yeah um, I'll get that done I've also um, been rather careful with painting the pattern um, just the sort of darker areas with the first blue you can see that starting to take shape I'm looking forward to seeing it done with the, um, the yellow um, on top as I said this pre-shading technique I've, I've done it with um, yellow and red previously I've not tried the blue so this is kind of my first attempt so a little bit of trial and error but there we are so yeah I'm waffling now so let me finish this and I'll uh, see you in a sec for um, the third wash so now that that's dry um, I think it's I'm, I'm happy with just two layers of the, the regal blue if I'm honest um, uh, most of my Thousand Suns army is, is quite a lighter shade of blue um, so this is a sufficient undercoat really for the next step so I'll leave the uh, the uh, darker shades as just the two layers but again entirely up to you what you're doing what the end result um, needs to be um, as to how many sort of layers you do so for the next step I'm going to use the slightly lighter blue in which case it's this magic blue um, it is fairly similar to the old enchanted blue if I'm honest, I am um, Thousand Suns. There's so many different shades of blue now over the course of the years. I've not really kept consistency. Um, but I'm just going to add a tiny little bit into that palette again. Um, and much like the, the first step, I'm going to err on the side of caution and add in six, six um, bits of water, whatever the measurement would be. Four, five six try and mix that now I feel if I'm you can just see slightly I'm painting this over the plastic and it still feels like it's paint it doesn't feel um, watery enough so I'm going to add another couple in here 
I'd rather be um, far too thin than ruin what we've done so far. So let me have a look at this again. All right, this should be enough. I suppose bear in mind because I uh, take, took that straight out of the bottle. It wasn't just like a brush load, was it? It was probably um, higher in volume than just the water would be on an, an individual brush there. So this is now very thin. I've, if I'm honest, I've lost track of the uh, consistency, but there we are. So let's try and apply this to somewhere that's fairly hidden um, down the back. So yeah, it is quite thin. It's quite thin. What do we think that looks like? It's a tricky one to gauge. Let's add a little bit more. So yeah, top tip, if you're unsure, paint an area that's not gonna be really uh, visible. All right, this, this has to be all right now. Try the other side. Okay, yeah, this is more like it, I think. So, so we're just gonna paint over, much like we've done before. Hopefully, it all depends. It depends on the, the finished result. It might be that this is sufficient just for one, but we won't really know until it's dry. Because each paint is very different. Each paint's got different sort of levels of pigment in it. Um, so it's a case of really um, trying your luck each time. I think the consistency is fine now. Um, again, just to reiterate, I think um, what was different about using these Valajo paints is uh, the traditional Citadel ones, you kind of take a scoop on the brush, put it in there, and then each subsequent dump of water on top is roughly the same um, volume because it's all on the same brush. Whereas this, this came straight from the bottle and then I'm adding water in. So I'm probably not getting the consistency right to begin with, but I think I've got there in the end. So if you are using those Valajo paints, just be mindful of that. I do find the Valajo paints, um, I kind of prefer them at the moment to Citadel. There are some Citadel paints that I really, really like, but then there are others, like the uh, White Scar at the moment. It's like a fortnight old, it's just gunky. All right, so there we go. I, th I think I'm fairly happy with this. Um, I'm just carrying on painting while recording because I kind of want to see what this bit starts drying like while I'm... Uh, on camera and I think it's okay it's obviously a lot lighter than it was but that was that was the intention all along oh just missed a bit there so there we go right if I can get it in the light so that I think um, if you were if you're watching this video going, I'm unsure about all of this, I'm not sure if this is working, hopefully by this stage, um, it suddenly it suddenly looks like it is working. Um, it will look a little better once it's dry and the uh, shine is taken away. Uh, and then finally, once it is finished, and in a second for you guys, I'll make a decision as to whether we want to put another layer on. Um, I know with the, the red I have done previ previously, it was two, <clears throat> two layers of the corn red the darker one and then I think three layers of the evil sun's scarlet with the yellow it was two layers of avalan sunset and then I think three layers of uriel yellow but I don't think I'm going to need three layers of this magic blue if I'm honest um, but we'll see in a second but uh, yeah let me crack on with the rest of this so with that done um, I think it, it definitely needs at least one more layer of the uh, lighter blue because uh, there's areas um, just kind of like here where you can still see a bit of the black. It's a it's a good um, it's a good step forward, 
um, but like you can see it's still quite streaky on the back door um, so I'm thinking one more um, sort of very thin coat of this magic blue and we should be should be there um, with only the uh, the yellow to do which I'll I'll touch on briefly All right, let's try and try and be a bit more careful with the consistency here Right, now if I paint it across the clear, it doesn't look like it's separating too much. Right. Start with the same corner again. Because what it ends up drying like is quite different to um, what it's like when it's when it's wet. When it's wet, there's there's quite a heavy um, saturation of the the colour, but then when it dries, it does seem to mute down a little bit. So I've been a little heavy there. Let me just pop that up a little bit. Catch underneath. I mean, I aim to stick some weathering powders over the bottom of this tank anyway once it's done, which I'll. Um, I'll link the video of me doing that at the end if you want to take a look. Weathering powders are pretty good. Actually, um, for a while I've sort of dry brushed different shades of brown over a tank, but um, then when I finally started using weathering powders, it made all the difference. Try and get it all in these little recesses as well. Because once I'm done with the blue, I don't. I don't want to come back and revisit it, so. All right, so um, it's a bit difficult to tell because obviously it's still wet, um, but we're starting to cover up a little bit more. Um, it's effectively, I'll, I'll probably, as far as the, the video is concerned, I doubt I'll do another layer on camera because you can, you can tell obviously the, the technique I'm doing. Uh, but if you're doing this yourself, I would say that um, wait for it to dry fully. Take a look. Are you happy with it? Is it you know is it a bit streaky? Um, do you think it could do with another layer? But obviously stop yourself from going too far because if you if you layer up too many layers, you just lose all that pre-shading we've done, and you might as well have just painted it the colour um, that you in this case magic blue. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a judgment call. Um, I would suggest actually if you're really unsure you know, of doing this before you tackle a model get a piece of sprue and um, uh, sort of pre-shade the length of it and then apply um, one layer up to about sort of 100% then apply a second layer up to 75% a third layer up to 50% and obviously going forward and then you've got that reference point to sort of check and go actually how many layers um, could I get away with before it actually started removing any of the pre-shading detail? Um, potentially what I probably should have done here with it being the first time I've, I've properly tried blue, but I, I think I've, I've got away with it. Um, so yeah, um, without further ado, I'll um, stop the recording, get this done, and then quickly show you at the end. I might do a like five, 10 minutes right at the end of this video with the yellow just to show you, but. That's the technique, and uh, give me a sec, and I'll show you the end result. So with that second lighter blue layer done, um, I'm going to call it quits with the layers of blue. Um, so you can see here that if we're just taking this example, the middle of this panel is slightly darker, and it does ever so slightly get lighter as it heads towards sort of the edges. And you can see that. Um, edge highlightings coming through, um, especially you can see it on the exhaust pillars as well. Um, this technique does seem to be more apparent on larger areas, where if you can see the back door, if the camera's picking up on it, the middle of it is darker and it gets lighter towards the, the outer edge. Um, and again, you can see it here with the blue, uh, only because I haven't done the yellow just yet. You can see how it's darker in the middle and it does get lighter towards the outside. To compare that 
um, to a rhino I painted last year. Um, so you can see um, my edge, high, edge highlighting is you know, it's a little bit sloppy here. Um, the panels are sort of like just one colour. There's no texture um, in it. Um, and this this particular rhino was, um, I think is it Calador Sky? And then there's a lighter one that's gone over top with a, um, a Gilliman glaze sort of wash over the top. The problem with using washes over such flat surfaces is there is, and it's probably difficult to tell, it's left it a little streaky. Um, so I think... They are largely um, similar um, if we just look at the blue, but I think this one is, is just a little bit, it's a bit more of an improvement. Um, I have got my um, Primaris Marine from McFarlane here, which I move him over. Let's see if I can move the camera up as well. So this is a little bit more apparent for the actual uh, technique. So you can see on his shin guard here, um, how I've, this was obviously a lot lighter and this was sort of almost black in the middle and the red the red seemed to work really well and again with the yellow if we can see just on the shin guard you can see the centre parts here and underneath here this is darker but it gets ever so slightly lighter towards the top um, so yeah that, that is the technique um, I think the red works the best but the yellow is pretty good the blue I'll probably play around with a little bit with the um, colour or, but it might be that the, the size of this vehicle, what with um, there being lots of smaller areas, that you don't get much shading here, um, but you still get the edge highlighting coming through, which is really what you want. Um, I will just quickly um, touch on the yellow. Um, so I'm just going to grab a small amount here. This is Avalan Sunset. And I'll do most of this work off camera. And if you want to see the, the finished result, um, I will put this up on my Instagram. If anyone's following me, um, I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check that out. But effectively, just like the Primaris Marine we've just seen, I'm going to do a layer of Avalan Sunset over this brownie sort of wash. I'm going to do two layers of this. Uh, and then probably a couple of layers of the Uriel yellow. Um, and I think that would be, uh, that would be it. And then I'll start working on the non-metallic gold, uh, obviously the weathering powders and all that. And I'll uh, link a couple of videos based on that other tank we've just seen that I painted last year. But um, yeah, that's the technique. Um, have a play around with it. Some colors work better than others. Some shades work better than others. Um, but yeah, have a play around with it on a sprue. Let me know how you get on. And I'll see you in the next one.